Am I too dumb for this book, or is this book too smart for its own good? My name is Chillmonger, and I hated the previous issue of Immortal Hulk. I got a lot of dislikes on that video, and one constructive criticism of a comment. Thank you. This one's dedicated to the constructive people, the folks who already hit dislike. Just This is the perspective of a, a hater of a comic book. Yeah, I'm a hater of this comic book series. Start from the top, and I'll explain why. It's a waste of a page. It's just black and a little quote. You get a limited amount. All pages matter. When there's a when there's a cap on the resources, there's only 20 pages allotted in comic books. You give me a waste of that, all pages matter. I want to say the art was epic over here. This was great. And then they say here, science has rules. It's predictable until you make a Sasquatch or and then it becomes magic. And I'm with that. I've always liked the saying that Magic is just science we don't understand, and that needs to be a consistent in Marvel Comics. I don't like here where it retconned the history. I am not with it. Retconning history, making the Hulk... And, and don't argue with me that, oh, this has been retconned. Where have you been, Chillmonger? It's been like 20 years. And it was wrong 20 years ago, as much as it is wrong right now. This guy had exposure to gamma radiation. He got angry. If you want to say that, well, it's because his dad was abusing him and that inner anger, okay that helps but then don't go ahead and say the gamma radiation was introduced to him previously BS and this is just continuing on BS, I don't need Hulk being reinvented I need Hulk being angry and smashing I understand that you can only tell that of, you can't tell that story too many times and you gotta because when you do that it's like we've already had the Avengers being called in for this guy in issue 7 which is one that I picked up just because it had the Avengers and I enjoyed it but Every time he flips out, we gotta call the Avengers? No, that's why he is going to different settings. I'm not even gonna say hell. Scar, he, he's been he's been in space how many times just so that he could be hulking out here. Hulking out at the Avengers, uh, sorry, the X-Men mansion. He hulks out different places as much as, as much as you can just to keep things fresh. Because he can't keep hulking out on Earth because this be the Avengers popping up. Especially now that they have the teleportation in their North Pole celestial hideout. So I, I do understand that why going to hell is useful and going and being important. Personally, I would have never made it hell because hell means nothing in Marvel and DC as well. Moving on, he's fighting some gamma monsters, so it looks like he's not the only one. And this is where Creel, the absorbing man, fights Banner's dad. Banner's dad is named Gabora. Gabora is called the left hand of God. And the opposite is Gola Chab, which is, I guess, the right hand of God. When Hulk gets to his dad for the final fight, it's a good dialogue. You were never my son. You belong to the one below all. And then Hulk is Hulk. Yeah, it's simple. I like it. And it's perfect. That was perfect. That's just what I want to read in my Hulk comic book. Uh, Hulk wins. They return back to Los Diablo. Almost everyone does. I like the normal bits of this book when it finally becomes a linear story instead of this metaphysical words with... Uh, Words popping up that were not in text boxes that it just you can skip and they don't really mean anything. I didn't need an explanation of Gaboro or Gola Chab. Like oh, it doesn't help because no writer will pick up this and continue on with it. There's a reason why I'm not picking up Age of X Men. Like I need a story that matters. Like when he calls up what's her name Betty Ross. Yeah, meaningful. But again, this book is being too smart for its own good. When it gives us the title of, you know, where were you calling from? And it's a phone booth from mid from the Midwest. What was it? it said this. That's okay. It didn't have the desired effect on me. Getting an answer to a question that I never asked isn't profound. Now coming at it from a wrestling logic, like I'm a wrestler, pro wrestler, tag team wrestling. You give the fans what they didn't know that they wanted. So when that entrance happens, tag team match, you got this one guy who may be stronger than the other and they're both partners. The whole match, the weak guy's getting his ass kicked, and he keeps reaching over right before a uh, big move is done on him, and then, ah, man, you see, his hand goes limp. And then maybe a minute later, after he thinks he escaped, there's a little bit of hope, and he couldn't reach the tag. Finally, when he gets that tag, I might have never seen these two wrestlers wrestle in my town before. But now that, oh, that's the strong dude. I saw him in the entrance. He smiled, and he high-fived me. That's the man that I want. He comes in the ring, cleans house, and you cheer because they answered a question you didn't know that you want. Tid. What did I say earlier? Answer. They answered the question, and they provided the question, and you didn't know you wanted the answer until you got the answer, and that's 
that's good. That's wrestling psychology can be applied to anything, politics, comic books, any storytelling, like politics. So my point is that the whole phone booth thing in the Midwest wasn't profound. I'm being redundant now. I want to end the video. Go ahead and thumbs up this video if you enjoy criticism and enjoy conversation. And if you don't, I'll be back for Hulk number 13.